Hi there, everybody. Uh, welcome, and welcome especially to those whose power failed in their hotels this morning. And especially welcome to the ones who found that when the power goes off, you go out into the corridor to investigate, you can't get back into your room if the power has gone. So uh, congratulations to you. Um, of course, uh, my broadcasting career is as nothing uh, to what I do in uh, genomics. Uh, I am delighted and proud to be uh, head of engagement for the 100,000 uh, Genomes Project. And today we've got a wonderful, wonderful program. And I think it absolutely uh, positions the UK and the 100,000 Genomes Project absolutely at the leading edge not just for the UK, but of course, for our primary focus, uh, the UK's NHS patients. So without more ado, I want to uh, introduce the first of our three speakers. We will have a question and answer session after our three speakers uh, have spoken. So there'll be time to ask questions. So meanwhile, without more ado, can I introduce uh, George Freeman, Minister of Life Science and cheerleader for genomics everywhere. Uh, and for the introduction and for those of you who've got up early in what sounds like dark hotels and found your way here. Um, I was really pleased to hear that comment in the opening remarks about the connection to suffering at the heart of this movement uh, and this uh, cause and this community. Uh, most people who are interested in genomics are interested because they understand the power of genomics to transform diagnosis and treatment. And I come to public office after a 15 year career investing in and starting companies in biomedicine and backing researchers. And I've never forgotten one presentation. It was a big Cambridge investor conference in 2000 when investing was easy and everybody was making money. And the third speaker was the head of corporate finance at, I think it was Namira in New York. And on came somebody dressed not in the power costume of a big financier, but a woman in her early 40s in jeans and a t-shirt and what Americans call sneakers. And she walked to the front of the stage and she said, I'm not gonna to talk to you today about uh, uh, net present values and rates of return and all the things that I've lived. I've come to tell you that I will be dead in four years. And she just received a diagnosis of a rare blood cancer. And in very soft tones, she said, I've come to remind you that this whole industry is about one thing. It's about disease, patients, diagnosis, and cure. And she said, I won't be around to see the benefits of the research that I've funded. Please shorten the timelines, drive through the diagnosis and the treatments, and remember the patients who this industry, this sector is here for. I mean, one of the things I think this festival is doing brilliantly, and I'm delighted to be here to support and encourage it, and this project is doing, is uh, making sure that from day one, line one, this project isn't just about high science, exquisite though it is, it isn't just about cutting edge, genomics and informatics and terabytes of data. The, the voice of the patient, those who suffer, those who don't have a diagnosis, and those who we know with the progress of these extraordinary projects we're going to be able to develop diagnosis and treatment for, that this is about them. And I really support and welcome that focus in this festival and the word festival because it speaks to a genuine coming together of people fired up by an interest and a passion and a zest for something, a shared interest. And it is that, I think, that really makes this project <coughs> special. I want to say something this morning about the original vision that the Prime Minister set out when we embarked on this project and made that groundbreaking commitment in 2012. Something uh, about the progress that's been made here in the UK with Genomics England and where we've got to. And I'm going to make uh, two big announcements this morning about where we go next. It seems fitting to me that we meet as the International Space Station circulates in orbit above us and a British astronaut is on it for the first time. Because the Prime Minister's announcement back in 2012 that we would be the first nation on Earth to sequence at scale the entire genome uh, of NHS patients, 100,000 genomes, and bring them together and combine them with clinical data in the NHS to build what is effectively the NASA of 21st century biomedicine was, I think, the biomedical equivalent of the Kennedy moonshot in 1960. 
When we sat down in 2010, a newly elected government, remember we're at a time when this country, the European economy, global economy, dominated by debt, depression, doubt, people wondering really where the growth was going to come from, were we going to break out of a broken model of growth. The conversation we had was life science and biomedicine is absolutely central to this country's future. Health is one of our biggest rising costs at the heart of the structural deficit. We have to make health and the NHS make us, not break us. We have to invest in our health leadership. And as genomics and informatics transform this sector, transform the way drugs are developed, transform the way disease is diagnosed, we need to set out a bold lead uh, on genomics and on informatics. And I can tell you it now seems, and it's a credit to this project and this sector, that it seems weird to think of it, but when we sat and said, Prime Minister, we want, we, we want to suggest that we're the first nation on earth to sequence the entire genome, 100,000 NHS from NHS patients and combined with data. There was a pause, and the idea seemed completely outlandish. Now it seems the obvious thing to have done, and the scale at which other countries are uh, investing and doing similar projects, I think, is on a par with the space race as well. Fifty years ago, Kennedy's speech set America on a path to do something in the context of a terrifying uh, Cold War with mutually assured destruction and the Soviet missiles pointing at America. Now, Soviet scientists and American scientists in space working together, uh, taking forward science uh, in space. And this project is similar, international collaboration, working together to drive forward genomic medicine in the new frontier inside the cells inside every one of us. So I, I think that when Kennedy said, we choose to go to the moon not because it's easy, but because it's difficult, he captured something, uh, there's a parallel spirit in biomedicine, inside the cell we're going in to unlock the cause of health and disease right inside the human cell. It's an inspiring mission, and I'm very proud that we're doing it within the values, the moral values of the NHS. And our determination on day one was that we would do this not just as a high science project, but that we would do it integrated with the National Health Service to draw on the values that it has of commonality, of common purpose, and of shared resources and shared vision, and in a way that made sure the NHS didn't view genomic medicine as a costly new innovation that it wasn't sure how to adopt, but it had helped to design it, to develop it, to invent it, and adopt it. So our commitment is that the NHS will be the world's leading genomic medicine service at scale over the years ahead. We did something else that was innovative. We decided we'd do it through a company not to create a quango, a government department, but we create a company, Genomics England Limited, and I want to applaud John Chisholm and his team. We, we did that, uh, not because we want to make money out of it, but because we want the flexibility of a company to work with companies and build an international cluster. And it's just brilliant to see at this festival the range of companies, projects, researchers here in London building that cluster of genomic expertise. Not least Illumina, our technology partner on the sequencing. It's a beautiful story that Illumina's technology was originally developed in Cambridge by a small spin-out, and it's now back in Cambridge at the Welcome Sanger Center being used at scale by a global business. This is a sector that works on collaboration between academic, clinical, and uh, industry, small and large, and I welcome the very substantial investment that Illumina have made. Let me just say something about the progress that we've made in the last three or four years. It won't surprise you to know that for the first year, putting together a project of this scale takes a bit of planning and time. But I'm delighted we've now got 6,000 whole genomes sequenced. We've got 13 genomic medicine centers set up across the NHS, uh, recruiting patients, but also developing the protocols for genomic medicine, those leadership centers to take genomic medicine out, initially in cancer and rare diseases, but they are the bridgeheads for genomic medicine in the service for tomorrow. And we've got first diagnoses. I was always convinced that long before we completed the whole 100,000 sequencing and the combination with phenotypic data, the insights would come quickly in particular diseases. And to go and see a great Ormond Street, uh, Georgia Green, Jessica Wright, children who've had diagnosis for rare diseases, and the look in their parents' eyes that, that finally somebody's able to begin to explain what is wrong with their children and begin, no cure yet, but begin to apply the science and the extraordinary opportunities of biomedicine, the reassurance in those parents' eyes that suddenly ignorance is replaced by the beginnings of a trail of knowledge and understanding was something uh, to behold. So let me say, it's for all of those reasons I'm absolutely delighted to be able today to announce 
that after the initial investment of uh, between us and Illumina, 300 million to get this project going, we've secured and are today announcing another 250 million pounds to make sure this project goes on. Secondly, I'm delighted to announce that we are uh, today beginning the process of bringing first full cancer uh, uh, patients and sequence into this project. It won't surprise any of you in this room to know that it turns out extracting the DNA from cancer cells, which are uh, in the process of effectively out of control reproduction, is not an easy task. John will say a bit more about that uh, later. So we're ahead on rare diseases, and now we begin to turn the handle on cancer and go to scale. And we're going to hear a bit more this morning about three inspiring sisters with a breast cancer diagnosis who are uh, leading the extraordinary opportunity for cancer patients in this country, recruited through a local GNC. This is not just a London, Oxford, Cambridge project. This is taking genomics out across the country and giving that possibility to patients around the country. And I'm thirdly delighted to announce that we now have 4,000 fully linked data sets at the heart of Genomics England. I want to just close by saying something about our commitment and ambition for where we go next. Uh, we never wanted this to be just one technology project, sequence 100,000 genomes combined with the hospital data, job done. That was the beginning. That was the Houston, the NASA of a project. The moonshot is to launch the Genomic Medicine Service in the NHS. And I'm leading a work stream at the moment with John and the Chief Medical Officer and a number of other leaders in this field for where we take this project next. And I believe that uh, Genomics England Limited as a company, the only shareholder is the Secretary of State, uh, in a contract with NHS England is the right structure taking it forward so that JEL can work with companies, with academics, with international groups, can build that Houston center of genomics research and have a contractual relationship with NHS England, which will supply data and tissues and clinical insight for patients and receive information from GEL on diagnosis uh, and genomic insights that will drive the adoption of uh, genomic medicine. And there'll be more announcements on that in due course. Two other things I wanted to add. We're not just doing the science. I'm leading a major review of our pathway for the adoption, assessment, and reimbursement of 21st century medicines. We know that genomics is already beginning to totally change the way drugs are developed and the way NICE and NHS England will be able to and will have to assess uh, drugs that come forward for approval. We envisage people coming to us with a drug that has a genomic biomarker that has total predictability. It will work in these patients and that puts a coach and horses through our traditional model of assessment and it's a challenge we relish and through the accelerated access review we are working to put in place a new pathway uh, so that uh, genomics isn't just uh, great science and great diagnosis, but we're clearing the way for genomically informed treatments to come through the system. And thirdly, this is all about informatics. DNA is in many ways nothing more than the most exquisitely beautiful information storage system known to man. And what a beautiful thing it is that for all the informatics, all the mainframes, all the clouds, the best system for storing information turns out to be inside the very cell in every, uh, in every one of us. And it's um, a tribute to the scale of the informatics progress uh, in this sector that we are beginning to unpack it and make sense of it. But we are working on making sure that in this next phase, uh, we unleash the power of the NHS as the world's only universal comprehensive healthcare system and to harness the informatics under that and under the billion pound a year National Institute for Health Research uh, clinical infrastructure in the NHS so that we're able to build that integrated informatics structure to support the genomics medicines system. So as the International Space Station circulates in orbit, since I started talking, it's probably been around the Earth twice, uh, and international scientists are working on the new frontier, taking us off to Mars, to Jupiter, and exploring incredible science in space that will help us work out how to live in the 21st century. I believe this project is every bit as exciting, an intracellular journey to the new frontier that will drive medicine in the 21st century. Thank you for coming back to London. Thank you for everything you're doing to build this cluster and this community. And our support from the Prime Minister and the Secretary of State and I is that we will continue to invest and back and support this and make sure that the NHS is a leader in genomic medicine in the 21st century.